We just made these super tall, super easy rope shelves, and we'll show you how we did it right now. What is up? Welcome back. Do you like to do it, build it, or make it? So do we. And we have a new video each week. This week, we're taking it to a whole other level with some rope shelves. We're gonna hang them high. We are gonna hang them high. They're gonna start at about eight feet. Is that yeah, what it was? Maybe foot. just a little above that. Anyway, these are gonna be some shelves for our front room. We needed a place to display some of our door rounds and some of the decor that we'll be doing in our workshops. And so I thought this was a great piece to add to that room. We've done floating shelves in the past, but we've never done rope shelves. So I'm excited to try this this week. <laughs> Step one, we're gonna gather all of our supplies. We needed two one by tens by six foot. Now, you don't have to have them at six foot. We're gonna make our shelves 36 inches. You can make yours for whatever length you want that fits your space. Uh, something smaller than that, but 36 is what we're going with. Then we needed a saw to cut those in half. Or you can have those cut by your local hardware store. They will cut them down for you. Or you can cut them over at the trim section. That's true. We needed a drill with a 5 8 inch paddle bit so we can put the holes in so the rope will go through. And you need some rope. I'm using half inch rope. You could use up to one inch rope. I really wanted one inch, but I couldn't find it. So half inch will work. And you'll need about two sections at 18 feet each. We needed some measuring tools. We have a speed square, a tape measure, and a ruler. It's a lot of measuring. And you'll need some stainer paint. We'll be staining ours today. And uh, that is it. Step two, we're gonna make all of our cuts. We're just gonna take these two six foot boards and cut them in half. We're gonna mark the center with this blue tape and cut across the tape to help prevent splintering. Okay, my blade is one and three eighths inch off of the edge of the cage around the blade. So I'm gonna measure one and three eighths inch off center and I'm gonna put a ruler down to use as a guide. So I have a nice straight cut. Garrett tends to get wonky with I this I get thing. a little crazy. <laughs> we're gonna tape off where we're gonna drill the holes so we also get a clean hole. No splintering. Well, less splintering. Yes. We're gonna measure in one and a half inches from the front or the back of the board and two inches from the side of the board. Next, we're gonna drill the holes for the rope. They're gonna be two inches in from the end and an inch and a half in from the front and the back. We've marked them and I'm gonna drill with this bit and I'm only gonna go through the front side until this little tip pokes through. And then I'm gonna flip it and drill from the backside down. That helps prevent splintering. Otherwise, if you go straight through, the backside splinters really bad. <laughs> Trust me, I know. <laughs> The cuts and holes look tight and crisp, Woo. but we think it needs a little bit of sand so it'll accept the stain a little better. Step three. And now we stain. Well, now Kim stains. These boards are looking a little naked. So uh, we're gonna throw a quick coat of briar smoke on them. That's right, we're gonna use Varathane's briar smoke and we're gonna use these little stain sponges. I will tell you, these are the best things ever. So if you haven't tried them, I highly recommend it. Watch how fast I can stain this thing. <laughs> Ooh, it's a race. <laughs> I'll race over here doing something else. Mm-hmm, I know. Step four. 
We go lasso some cattle. Actually, we're just gonna assemble it. We're gonna bring it all together. We're gonna start by folding the rope in half and tying a loop at the top. Don't look at Garrett's, his is a bad example. As we got ready to film this segment, I saw his tied in a knot and I knew, I knew that's what you were about to do. You knew you shouldn't mm -hmm. run because I would lasso you by the leg. <laughs> All right, like he said, we have 18 feet here. I folded it in half, so we're going to use this little loop at the top. And we're going to come down about three inches, add some jute, and that's what's going to keep the, the loop tight. Make the loop for the top of the hook. Oh, loop You'll in see. the top. You'll see what I'm talking about. It's a tiny little lasso. All right, so can I get one of those little hooks? Can I get a what, what? Can a little clamp, a little clamp, not a hook. There we go. Clamp it. So I'm just going to clamp it together just to get things started. It's only going to be temporary. And then I'm going to use this little piece of jute here. Comes in a little roll like this. And I've got about six feet. All I did, there's nothing exact about this. I just did like this. See, six feet. Use my head. <laughs> then what I'm going to do is fold a little loop at the end. This is probably six inches. I'd say six inches. Lay it down and start wrapping our string around it. Now that I've got it started, I can take this clamp off. Got the clamps. And then just loop it on around. This should give you about two inches of tie. Again, does not have to be precise at all. If anybody starts coming at it with a measuring tape, I'll distract them real quick. <laughs> Hey, look, I forgot to paint the bottom of that wall. <laughs> All right, now, with, now that we have our little end, we've got it like three inches left on the end, we're gonna put it through the loop that we started with and take the little piece that, that we started with at the top here, and we're just gonna pull that through. Pull them through to the other side? No, about halfway, I'd say, just like that. And then we're gonna snip this and snip this. Oh, look at that. Now we have our little tie. I can go uh, lasso some mice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, are you gonna do yours? Oh, do I have to do mine? I started it. So I fold it in half, like six inches. Mm-hmm. I'll just put that up here. Uh-huh. All right. All right, now let's go to the front room and we'll install our shelves. I'm gonna use that same 5 8 inch paddle bit and make a hole in the wall because we're using a hook that has an anchor bolt. Then we're just gonna toss that loop over top of the hook. Next, we'll add the rope into our shelf holes. This will be our top shelf. We'll slide it up. We'll use these mini clamps to hold it while we tie it. We'll tie a knot under each side and ensure the shelf is level. We're gonna measure 18 inches down to do the second shelf, and the next three verses are the same as the first. <laughs> All 18 inches apart. Step five, now we have the accents. We're going to fray the edges at the bottom, so to tie this thing off and make it look decorative, we're just going to leave about eight inches, and then we're gonna unwind and fray the edges so they're a little bit decorative at the bottom. What'd you guys think? I was definitely taller than I thought it was gonna be. I think it's exactly what I wanted it to be. I wanted to hold these door rounds and display them this way, and I think it's doing a great job of it. How would you make it differently? I think it's great. It could be painted. There's just lots of options with this thing to make it match your decor. So many different choices on the rope, the boards, the paint. Where you hang it, ceiling or the wall. Yeah. All right, we are about out of time. So if you're not gonna join us for the patron after show, we will see you next week where we'll do it, build it, and make it again. And they're already on the wall, so I can't balance them. Nope. Be right back, hold on. 
Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Coming in. Here he comes. Wait till you see this. Yeah. Back in. <laughs> Back in with my step stool. <laughs> it's a real circus around here. <laughs> 